Have you guys smelled it yet? Yeah, I did. Fucking good, right? It's real good. <laughs> Man, I love that shit. Okay. Uh, all right, everybody. <laughs> uh, welcome to another uh, episode of Another Bourbon Show. Uh, tonight, we are going to be drinking one of my recent favorites. Uh, this baby right here. Elijah Craig Toasted Barrel. Um, this is... It's the exact same mash bill as Elijah Craig small batch. Um, but this just goes through a, a finishing barrel. Uh, so the mash bill on this is 78% corn, 12% barley, and 10% rye. Uh, it doesn't have an age statement, but it's thought to be uh, in the four to six year range. Um, that's for both the Elijah Craig small batch and the Elijah Craig toasted barrel. Uh, the one thing that's different about this version is that uh, normal barrel of Elijah Craig small batch gets dumped, gets mixed, gets bare, uh, uh, bottled. This, when it comes out of that first barrel, it goes into a second barrel. Uh, that second barrel has been toasted. Um, uh, that means that the, the barrel's made, and instead of being exposed to absurdly high heat for a short period of time, the, the wood is toasted instead it's exposed to a lower heat for a longer period of time so like um 45 minutes as opposed to 45 seconds um it dries the wood out and gives it a totally different character um so that's what toasted barrel is and that's what we're going to be drinking tonight and i love this shit absolutely love it it just came out in september uh it was not available until then but it is part of their permanent line now so uh steven what do you think of that? Well, Elijah Craig is one of those that I personally, I think it looks good, but I think that it's hard to tell from a distance which Elijah Craig it is, at least for me. Um, maybe as you get more used to it, you can pick it up more easily. Mm -hmm. uh, but sometimes that script underneath Elijah Craig is a little bit hard to make out from a distance. Yeah. Um, so I think it's, it's, it's like nice, but it's very, very bland, the whole label. And okay. um, then the label at the bottom is like such a separate thing from it. It doesn't feel like it fits in at all. So I'm giving this one a straight five out of 10. This is very middle of the road. They didn't do anything egregiously bad or anything. Mm -hmm. I just, and I, I like the overall look of the bottle, but it just, to me, it's, um, it's, it's one of the most bland labels out there personally. Okay. Okay. That's fair. Um, just as a comparison, here is a normal, Elijah Craig small batch. So really the, the difference is I'm trying to get the, to where the glare is not so bad. Yeah. Uh, really the differences are the colors. Yeah. That's, it's nice that's that really... they have such a clear bottle um, mm -hmm. and, and the, maybe the width of the bottle helps with that too. Yeah. Um, but I think that I, I, maybe the biggest problem I have with it is that they went with like a beige color for the Elijah Craig font. Oh, okay. It just adds to the overall blandness to me, sort of, of the bottle. But I think it, it overall it looks nice. Like, it's not bad. Yeah. I'm peeking to see if I've got a... No, I don't have one down down here. I've got a um, couple bottles of the Elijah Craig um, full proof, the barrel proof upstairs. And, like, if I had all three of them side by side, you'd be like, I don't see the difference unless you, you look really close. Yeah. Um, I think what do you think of the back head. of the bottle? Back of the bottle. Oh, the back. It, I, I like that the back of the bottle is blank. That's always nice. <laughs> I do. I think basically it all comes like this is one of those kind of like old elk was where it like kind of comes down to the topper quite a bit. Yeah. Um, even blends, you know, as well um, for different reasons. Cool. But I think like the top topper is basically what gives it any character. Yeah. Um, yeah. Okay. Yep, just says Elijah Craig in, in script there. Um, okay, so I, th you know what? I'll be honest with you, Stephen. There's times that I've beaten you up a little bit about like how you've rated different uh, bottle designs, but on this one, I, I can't argue with you at all. Um, it is very bland. Uh, I don't think that that's necessarily a bad thing. It's pretty simple, straight to the point. Um, but I mean, as respected as Elijah Craig is, if you taste what's in the bottle, you're buying it again. You're like, you might not like what, 
if you buy it and you've never heard of it, then you're buying it because of whatever reasons. But chances are pretty high that if you taste it, you're probably really going to like it, no matter which version you go with, especially at the price that, that it's offered at. Um, and you're going to buy it a second time, no matter what the label looks like. So, yeah. I so, think, yeah, I, th- I think, I think it's, five you know, fair. It's not, it's not the end of the world if something doesn't have a phenomenal label you know, especially Mm -hmm. in whiskey, you're going to buy stuff, not necessarily for the label, of course, but I think it's also not a stretch to say uh, that I'm a martyr for doing it. So. Oh, sure. Yeah. 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 Well, (laughs) and the thing is, is that like, I, I, there have been some bottles that I've never heard of and I bought them. Like, I don't know that I've ever, uh, let's be honest here. I've probably bought a bottle that I've never heard of just based on the label. Like, like, oh, I'm going to try something new today. Which one am I going to go with? Oh, I'll go with this one. The label probably does have something to do with it. Now, again, whether I buy that bottle a second time or not has nothing to do with the label. It has 100% to do right. with what the inside, what's inside that bottle. Uh, so Elijah Craig is distilled by Heaven Hill. Um, Heaven Hill is a phenomenal distillery. Um uh, this happens to be an episode where all three of us got our bottles from me. Um, I, uh, Stephen got a, a small little four ounce glass uh, tester vial. Um, Ryan got a full bottle of it from me while he was down here visiting. I'll be honest with you. I don't know exactly which store I got this from because I got a, I've gotten some from Bobby's place i've gotten some from dean's in collinsville and i did get some from near av over in effingham too so i can't be certain where each one of them came from um that we're drinking tonight but all of them were purchased between 45 dollars and 55 dollars um and the srp for these is 50 dollars even um so any three of those locations my three favorite spots um if you see it if it's available uh you can trust that you're buying it for for a fair reasonable price um now whether or not they admit whether they have it or not that's probably going to be based on whether or not they know you um Mm -hmm. it is not easy to find at this moment Uh, as it's you know as the supply keeps increasing it's likely that it'll be a little bit easier to find um but until then you kind of got to know somebody uh, to get it at a, at a decent price, save on those sons of bitches that can eat my whole ass. Um, they have it sitting on the shelf for $99. And if you're paying $99 for it, then you're going to be disappointed. Um, but at 50 to $55, I think you're going to be really happy. So what do you say? We want to give her a go. Let's do it. Cheers. 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 Oh, I love like even the scent of it just I just love it. So what do you oh, think, boys? <laughs> Ryan made some faces. I, I'm curious what he went through just now. Yeah, it was uh it's sweeter than I thought. Mm-hmm. Um maybe it's that toasted process. It's like a s'more almost. Uh, (laughs) no you hit the nail on the head as far as i'm concerned so like Lear, let me tell you a story about this so um about two weeks before this was available in illinois the the guys that i'm closest with from from bobby's um they went down to heaven hill to do a barrel pick of of standard elijah craig I wasn't able to make that trip. I was invited, but I wasn't able to make the trip because uh, they went down there on a Wednesday and that just did not work for my schedule at all. Um, so they went down there, they come back up, they get back up and I talked to Jose, uh, the same Jose that was on our episode number nine with the Woodford Reserve Double Oaked. And he goes, Dan, I got a chance to try some toasted barrel while, while I was down there. He goes, and the only way I can describe the Elijah Craig toasted barrel is it's a bourbon that just makes me happy. That was how he described it. He goes, I can't really get into the flavor notes, the profiles. He goes, but 
but having a sip of it just genuinely made me happy. And I was like, well, I've never heard a description like that, but now I have to try it. Right. And I, I can't describe it in any way better than the way Jose described it, that it, it just makes me happy. You said s'more. I get toasted marshmallow. I, I get that. I get caramel. I get vanilla. I get some baking spices. Um, I get all of that. I get some baking spices for sure. I think the thing that stands out to me most about this, I totally agree that it tastes like uh, a s'more, but to me, there's less marshmallow than there is graham cracker in it. I got a lot of graham cracker, I think. Oh, really? Yeah. Now the nose was, is this may be one of the best examples so far of something that to me anyway, smells entirely different than it tastes. Mm -hmm. um, I, I think it's almost like, uh, I don't know. I almost get um, almost like a wild turkey type smell, maybe because of the, the, the sort of the baking spice. Um, mm -hmm. and then whenever I taste it though, this is like a very sweet yet mellow taste, the long hug. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, I really like it as well. And to me, this blows wood for reserve double oaked out of the water. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Should I even be comparing those though? How similar is no. the process? No. Okay. Uh, no, the, no, the process is almost ident identical. Okay. Um, yeah, the, the, the process is almost identical. I don't find the two of them very comparable. Just look at any of the Buffalo Trace products, their mash bills, how many different variations and taste profiles come from the exact same process stored in within 300 feet of each other and they have they end up with a completely different flavor um so yeah i don't the the process is almost identical um but the taste to me is nowhere even similar to each other so what Delicious. do you think ryan <laughs> i'm pouring I'm pouring myself more do you like it <laughs> i like it a lot yeah okay yeah, I'm, yeah i'm here i'll show you my pour real quick yeah, there we go. It's uh nice. About three show the shots bottle. in there, probably. Show the bottle. <laughs> he opened that already. He opened that literally like while we were preparing <laughs> to record. First time I've ever had it. First time I've ever had an Elijah Craig product, actually. No. I, I think, you know, I I feel like I did have it at a bar just straight once. Um, yeah. just small batch, but nothing I remember, obviously. Um, because it's been years. But I like this a lot. It's uh, if it if this is something I distributed, which is not, I would probably have a ton of bottles of it sitting yeah. at home. Yeah, I have five bottles of the various no six bottles of various Elijah Craig products right now on hand, and um, that's probably the lowest number of Elijah Craig products I've had in quite a while. Elijah Craig is a phenomenal, phenomenal bourbon. Um, their small batch is, is excellent. Their uh, barrel proof is really, really, really good. Um, they come out with three different batches of barrel proof every year. Um, all of them are very different. There's an A, a B, and a C version. Um, but yeah, they... Uh, Elijah Craig is good stuff. Uh, Ryan, I'm confident you've had Elijah Craig before. You just maybe didn't know it. Uh, when you're in Kentucky, if you order yourself an old fashioned, if you're not specific, a lot of times their rail is Elijah Craig. Um, yeah. Because a bottle of Elijah Craig small batch is 25 to $30, uh, 25 to $35, depending on where you're at. Um, so it serves as a really good, just baseline bourbon um but it's good sh good shit really good shit i did i've noticed that too in in louisville i mean outside of elijah craig but almost every rail is heaven hill products mm -hmm. yeah so i'm like man i and i i don't i see heaven hill in illinois but um when you go down to kentucky it's everywhere yeah yeah so it's like yeah, i'll just do a whiskey coke and it's always heaven hill and you're like all right well it's gonna be good yep 
four or five bucks you can't beat it and it never comes it's and it's never one of them that comes out of a plastic bottle either right like no. they're um they've got some heaven hill products that are not available outside of kentucky like their yeah. green label um that's that i mean that's like a 12 dollar bottle if you're down there and if you have that $12 bottle, you are going to be like, holy shit, that's $12 bottle? Like, I would never would have expected that. But it's, Heaven Hill makes, they're not to be messed with. They are. They're like, yeah, it's well water down here. Just Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's what comes out of the hand pump. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to be, I'm going to be a little drunk when I go to bed, no doubt. All right. And of course, yeah. you're staying at your mom's house tonight. Yeah. Damn right. <laughs> I think I'm going to keep recording here. Maybe I'll do one of that. It's just a better view. <laughs> the bar is cool, man. Yeah, and the internet works great. You don't have to like create a hotspot in some no. wacky situation. <laughs> no. You don't have to prop your phone up in a window? <laughs> no, don't have to do that. God, the Wi-Fi is so bad here. <laughs> I did have to. I installed my own Wi-Fi last week. By that, you that mean you fucking, plugged that... in a router? No, well, I went out and I bought a router uh because i i was like you know i don't want to pay 15 bucks a month renting yeah so i just went to best buy and i walked around do you need help i'm like no i'm fine i'll figure it out so i was originally gonna buy a router and uh what's the other thing modem Steven? modem uh i'm staying out of this like, is gold that, i'm that, staying out of this that, <laughs> that, that, uh, like that's just expensive so i just did a two-in-one you know modem and router in the same one which i hear isn't the best thing to do but i don't know what the fuck i'm doing so whatever Spent 200 bucks. I figured it out. Only took a couple hours. I almost beat the shit out of the thing, you know, just fucking work, you know, like a baby, but just got to shake it. Just, but yeah, it's fine. <laughs> it's a hundred or a thousand megs, whatever that means. It's fast. Your internet is. Yeah. Okay. But yeah. it doesn't have a bar. No. What? Oh, what do you mean? But you don't have a bar, house right? a bar. House. Not no. I mean, I'm probably gonna buy one from a furniture store, you know, like a makeshift one, but nothing like built Dude, into you know the wall. What you can do? Like <laughs> I know that I know that this is gonna be mind blowing to you because you are without question the least technology minded person that I've ever met that's younger than me. <laughs> you realize you could like take a picture of the bar and use that as a virtual background at the location where you've actually got decent fucking internet, right? Like you realize that. that that's an option. There's not a fucking green screen behind me, Dan. Uh, is there a green screen, screen behind me? Wait, is that not really what's behind you? Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> hey, look, oh, everybody. Oh, this is what you mean. Holy cow. Look at that. Oh, I'm, part of the, I'm part of the cheers cast. How do I do that? Well, you have to more? have the picture first, jackass. Oh, the audio only crowd's gonna love this segment. <laughs> <laughs> oh, god. Okay, so uh, what's up, guys? I'm so in San anyway, Francisco. there you go. Look at that. So here's my point. Record at your house. That's got good. That. That's actually the best image we we've got of you right there. Is it? <laughs> it because you, your video was gone. <laughs> yeah. Here. How about this? How about this? All my alarms for when I wake up in the morning. Yep. How's that? It's a winner. <laughs> it takes you an hour and fifteen minutes to wake up. Dude, I set alarms every five minutes. I can't wake up. Looks like fifteen minutes increments. I'm calling you out on as being a liar. Well, I also have alarms on my phone that go every five minutes. Mm. This is just my iPad. Yeah. Also, oh, do you okay. ever think the reason why you can't wake up is because you know subconsciously that you have other alarms coming and you can just wake up at the latest one? No. <laughs> right, just a thought. <laughs> Not possible. <laughs> no. Because <laughs> if, if I set one alarm, I won't wake up. How is that any different? What? What do you, because I will wake up eventually. I'll start to get annoyed by the alarms. Yeah, and you wake up at the final alarm, right? Always. Yeah, but I'm still going to be on time. Yeah, that's fine. But you, the point is you just make one alarm, and it's whenever you have to wake up because that's when you wake up, when you have to. 
it doesn't work like that, dude. Sorry for confusing right. you. <laughs> let's, let's move on. <laughs> oh God. So hey, listeners, uh, watchers, whatever you're doing, we were talking earlier. And you know how I mentioned a second ago that I've got all of these bottles of Elijah Craig. Um, we decided as a group that we're going to give away this bottle of Elijah Craig right here. Um, this bottle is a uh, store pick. It's an excellent store pick um, from Bobby's uh, over in Glen Carbon, Maryville, Lebanon locations. Uh, I'm going to give one away. So if you want this, then what you got to do is you need to actually, matter of fact, Stephen, tell them what they got to do to win it because it just, was your idea. Just go to your favorite episode so far of Another Bourbon Show and be sure to like it and then leave a comment um, of some kind. Positive comment. A positive, positive yeah, comment. Come on, don't be a dick. We're, we're potentially giving you some free bourbon. Otherwise, you're getting old crow, fuckers. Yeah. And uh, yeah, an an opened bottle of Old Crow, not even a brand new one. <laughs> yeah, it's opened. So go to the background from that was the back. That's what my uh, iPad was hanging on, by the way. So gotta put oh. that back. <laughs> that's a load bearing Old Crow. <laughs> <laughs> so go to so go to another Bourbon show, like one of the episodes on YouTube. Your favorite um, one, whatever one is your favorite. Yeah, whichever one is your favorite. Uh, but comment why it's your favorite. How about that? Tell us why it's your favorite and you got to subscribe to us on YouTube as well. Um, and we, we will do a drawing. This was what was, what was fucking us up earlier. We were trying to figure out how to go about providing the winner. We will announce the winner on our recording that we record on the 21st of December which will be released on like the 11th or the 18th of January. Um, but if you're the winner, you'll know about it way before the actual re uh, episode is released on the 11th or the 18th. Uh, so do it. This uh, And this bottle can be yours. And if you uh, win, I'll, I'll find a picture of you on Facebook and make it my background for the episode. Hey, look at that. <laughs> yeah. For the whole episode? The whole episode. That's not going to be creepy at all. <laughs> so don't, don't do a few minutes. <laughs> don't if you if currently if you're entering and your Facebook profile picture is like the World Trade Center or some dumb shit like that. <laughs> this is for you, okay? <laughs> it's falling down behind me. Hey, how many how many B tacks have come through your hands to stores lately? Uh, only one. I've only seen one, and they got a bottle of ten, a twelve, and a fifteen. One bottle okay. each. Okay, that's it. Um, none of the none of the actual B tacks have come out though. Like the, none of the no, oh no, I, not that or... I not that I've seen, but you know, I probably only have one, maybe two stores that would get anything. Um, okay. Yeah, usually we'll see it. You know, whenever this airs, probably you know within the next week. It's usually always around Thanksgiving, but yeah. Have not seen a lot. Okay. Yeah. So I what to. I was what I was reading earlier this week was that uh, Julian, that's his name, right? The current Van Winkle. That's Julian. It's Julian. I'm confident. He was saying that um, there was less 10, 12, 15, 20, 23, et cetera, this year, but more rye this year. I don't know what that, that'll mean for anybody, but I mean, let's be honest. If you're sitting here, uh, so we're recording on the 18th of November. You're not listening to this for, for quite a while. Um, but and even on November 18th, gone. <laughs> what's that? It's all gone. It's all gone. Oh yeah. <laughs> if, if it's November 18th and you don't have a pretty good idea on if you're going to get any or where you're going to get it from, that means that you're either not going to get any or you're paying five hundred to a thousand dollars for a bottle, and if you want to do that, then then good on you. But I just want people to realize that if if you haven't been working on your building your relationships for the last six months, you're pretty much out of the picture. Like that's 
And if like, you're spending five hundred two thousand dollars on that bottle, don't don't enter our contest, please. Like, leave it. <laughs> there's people out there who are really hurting. Let them. Do this <laughs> one, <all right? laughs> yeah, seriously, that's that's actually a really good really good point. Yeah, you you would think though overall because a lot of the bars and restaurants have been either closed or only doing carry out delivery there should be theoretically more bottles available to liquor stores or grocery chains now it doesn't mean that any more will go um who knows where some of it goes um but uh theoretically you should see more on the retail side all things considered but don't quote me on that yeah not like no, I know. That's... I'm, I'm, I'm out of the, I'm, they don't tell us hardly anything. So, and rightfully yeah. so. Yeah. Hey, do we want to, we, do we want to go ahead and rate this? Yeah, let's do it. Let's do it. Um, Ryan, why don't you start? Uh, yeah, I really like this one. Um, I can't remember what I gave Woodford double out, but I definitely like it more. Mm-hmm. Um, I want to see you give. Yeah, I'm just, I want to see you give double oak like eight point two or something like that. Like, like I think it was like an eight so five. Okay, yeah, or was, an eight four or something like that. Uh, I'm about to do something unprecedented. What is that? Nine point one. Whoa! Wow! This shit's Seriously. good. Seriously, this is good. Okay, Ryan, you gave it an 8.4 8.4 for the woodford double oaked yeah i like this this is my favorite 9.1 okay <laughs> the favorite like smoke wagon blow smoke wagon away is what you're saying yes blows it's not even, it's not even close. small batch away dude i think this might be one of my favorite bourbons no i don't I don't know how much I'd like it in like an old fat. I feel like it's too sweet. Um, but just straight what it is. Yeah. Yeah. I, I like it. Maybe it's because I'm having fun and I've, you know, I'm going to be polishing off like a third of this bottle tonight. I mean, I say time and I probably every goddamn episode, I put it out there that I don't care if my ratings are consistent or, or not, because part of what makes bourbon great is your attitude, your, the mood you're in, the company you're with, the all of that, right? Like you could try this a week from now and maybe it tastes like shit, but just because of what you had for lunch or what you had for dinner or... Dude, I've had this on my nightstand since you gave it to me. <laughs> I look at it every tried day. It. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So, so you're sticking a with a 9.1. I am. Okay. Over EHT small batch. Right now, yes. Okay. That's fair. I'm not, I'm not saying... I'm just trying to make you understand what a 9.1 is. In a cocktail, I'll go, I would go E.H. Taylor for sure. Okay. Um, Straight up though. I mean, this is so good. It's fucking good. It's so good. And I, who knows? We might have another one in a month where I'm like, it's my favorite ever. 8.3. Yeah. Yeah. I get it, man. (laughs) Yeah. Like anybody watches us anyway. Jesus Christ. Yeah. (laughs) <laughs> All right, Steven, let me hear what you got to say about it. I think I'm giving this guy a uh, 7.4. 7.4? Yeah, because I liked it, but this is like Double Oaked, even though I like it, and I actually like this more than Double Oaked, although I don't really care what I gave Double Oaked. I 7.5. Okay, so I actually like it more, but I, I, I think I, I'm comfortable with 7.4, and I think I would take down Double Oaked a little bit instead. Okay. Just because I, I like it. I think these are really solid. That's why I've given them sevens. Um, it's really solid. I really like it. That said, I just feel like I drink um, both of these whiskeys a little bit less than most of the others. So yeah. like Legion last week, I said I could go through a bottle that quick. Mm-hmm. I would love to have a bottle of this on my shelf, the Elijah Craig Toasted Barrel, but I would admittedly go through it much slower just because I'm less in the mood to have this sort of flavor profile Mm -hmm. um also what was the alcohol by volume on this Uh, oh 47 yeah yeah it's a 94 proof so 47 so um 
that is pretty much right around what I like to drink, I think. So yeah. that's not a big deal. But I, I feel like the proof <laughs> comes through a little more on this. Mm -hmm. um, so maybe I wouldn't be as in the mood to drink it on some nights for that reason too. Mm -hmm. But yeah, very solid whiskey, but I just would not drink it as, as often as some others. Okay. Maybe I like these like decadent, like sweeter bourbons. I never, before we started the show, I never realized, because the top two scores I think I've ever done are two bourbons that are kind of, you know, like chocolatey, s'mores, like, you know, it's good. I mean, it's definitely yeah. not something I would drink every single day. Like the Legion yeah. Yeah. goes well, like by itself or in a cocktail. Yeah. But this is, this is good. Like my buddies came over, I would pour them some of this and just oh, wash yeah. their faces. Yeah. 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 Thank okay. you for the bottle. <laughs> You're welcome, man. Like, <laughs> yeah, I mean, you came down here and yeah, I, I, yeah, anyway, um, and you gave great heads. So why wouldn't I? <laughs> um, so for me, um, last week after the recording ended, we were when we were talking about this one, you guys were like, if you don't rate this, because I don't think I've given anything above an eight yet, have I? It, I'm pretty sure you have it, but I. If I did, I it would have been Smoke Wagon. And I'm going to put this out there that I prefer Smoke Wagon Small Batch over this. Um, Smoke Wagon is way high, way high on my list at this point. Um, everything that smoke wagon does is way high on my list, except for the straight bourbon. It's mediocre at best. Um, regardless of that, I'm going to give this an 8.3. I do believe that it deserves a rating up in that eight zone, which is getting into like the really high upper echelons of ratings um, because listeners remember we go from 0, 0.0 to 10.0 um, with Jim Beam being a 5.0 and to me this is starting to get into those very very upper echelons that just are almost impossible to get to um, so I said 8.4 right yeah great 8.3. Okay, let's change yeah. it to an 8.4. It deserves an 8.4. So if you see it, get it, you'll be happy. I'm confident of that. Um, now, on the other hand, if you want this one, if you want this bottle, remember what you got to do. You got to like, comment what you like about the episode, subscribe. We'll figure out the details and get in touch with the winner later. Um, and a picture background. Yeah, and you get your picture and Name off's background. Oh shit! I forgot to give an update on Dustin Diamond. Oh yeah. Oh okay, yeah. Go ahead. Ah, do damn it. it! Damn it! I'm so dumb. Um. So I text Dustin Diamond. I I sent him a text message. On. Uh, I ended up only sending him a, sending him a text message yesterday. At 4 o'clock p.m., I said, is this still Dustin's number? If so, this is Dan. We met at a comedy club in the St. Louis area a few years ago. I never text you because I haven't seen you performing in this area since then, and I didn't want to bother you. Some buddies and I started a bourbon whiskey podcast, though, and we were talking about how awesome it would be to have you as a guest if you were willing, period. And I haven't heard back. So <laughs> he's either not responding, which is completely appropriate. I would 100% understand that. Uh, or it's no longer Dustin's number. I'm guessing that it's the prior. I'm guessing that he's just not responded. Um, so I'm going to send him a, a dick pic. And <laughs> like, because then I at least get a response. Yeah. It's likely that I get a response. Um, How long are you going to wait for the dick pic? Well, that actually brings up a good question. Which do you two think is more appropriate? Do I send him a dick pic or a taint pic? <laughs> I say taint because, well, I don't know, though. Can you go to J Can you get uh, any kind of trouble because of this? This isn't like a... Uh, How would I get in trouble? Why would I get in trouble I for guess, it? I guess you can't prove it's your dick, right? <laughs> I mean, even if I did, is that against the law? 
unsolicited dick pics? I don't it's know. It's just in poor taste, Brian. That's <laughs> Have you have you had a lawyer contact you for sending a dick pic? I mean, I get the feeling that, that that's a possibility. Just Nolan. <laughs> <laughs> but that's because you sent your dick pic to a lawyer. That's yeah, yeah. Probably. I feel retard- like it is so on brand if we like if we start out with these grand ideas of having Dustin Diamond be on our podcast <laughs> and, and it then, just and having having Steven Seagal fight right and it just devolves <laughs> into us sending our dicks to Dustin. <laughs> uh, so that's where we stand right now. Um, and by the way, our uh, GoFundMe page has raised exactly zero dollars, <laughs> which is exactly what I suspected that it would raise. But um, send him, no, you know what? Send him a screenshot of that. <laughs> <laughs> Just he hasn't even committed yet, but let him know that there has there is a uh, there is a GoFundMe that's over a week old that has yet. <laughs> Another